As the 2020 Formula 1 season winds into its final five rounds, we already have our first clue into how next year's cars will look. Although this year's chassis will be carried over into 2021 thanks to the financial consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic, there are a few changes that must be made in order to cut the overall downforce produced. The technical overhaul ushering in the return of ground effects will have to wait until 2022. The introduction of Pirelli's 18-inch tyres will also be delayed, meaning that the tyres designed for 2019 will get yet another year of service. There are a few aerodynamic changes to address this for next year, including removal of part of the floor and from the diffuser in response to this, estimated to bring a reduction of 10% in the overall downforce to ensure that the Pirelli tyres work within the low window intended. Without those changes, tyres designed for 2019 aero loads would then be forced to work under the increased downforce added by two years of aero progress. Although Pirelli could increase again the tyre pressures as it has done on certain occasions in 2020, it would have to risk inflating them even further and risk running them in a condition they weren't designed for. That's not really any slight on Pirelli at all and the tyre manufacturer has arguably the most thankless task in motorsport. Rather, it does the Italian company a bit of a favour, saving it the expense of developing an entirely new tyre for one season. Of course, had the teams decided not to veto Pirelli's attempted 2020 tyre construction, we might not have had any aero changes at all, but that's an entirely different story altogether. Ferrari tried a new floor and diffuser in practice for the Portuguese Grand Prix, in order to explore those changes and provide F1's onlookers with the first proper look at what's possible within the bounds of the new rules. The first involves a triangular cutout from the floor when looked at in the plan view of the car. This means that a multitude of the slots and cuts in the floor will either be eliminated due to the section of floor cut out, or due to new rules on continuity of bodywork. Ferrari has shown a representation of what the floors may look like next year, as it tapers inwards and doesn't cover as much of the rear tyre as it previously did. Removing those slots limits some of the protection that the diffuser has from the turbulence produced by those rear tyres and so Ferrari has attempted to mitigate some of that by creating a curled up trailing corner of the floor. This may be a bid to create some kind of tip vortex, which could theoretically roll in board and protect the diffuser. It doesn't have quite the same ability to create a seal around the floor, indeed that's kind of the idea of these changes, but it should go a long way to helping recoup some of the downforce. The diffuser will also lose 50mm from the length of the inside fences, meaning that they're less protected from turbulence and aren't as well sealed as they currently are. Ferrari has trialled that too, taking away some of the slotted fences within, which are broken up to coax the airflow into forming a larger expansion zone. 2021's aerodynamic tweaks are to peg the teams back in the anticipation that, over the winter and during the season, they'll recoup that lost downforce. Although the retention of this year's chassis has probably changed the usual time frame in which a car is designed and built, teams are beginning to now think about that process. In fact, Mercedes has already stopped bringing parts for 2020 a while back in order to focus on the aero changes for next year. Attempting to understand the effects of these changes should now help Ferrari, armed with a few practice laps on 2021 spec aero, and overturn some of the issues with its SF1000 earlier with greater development time. With Friday practice all about correlating wind tunnel and CFD data with real time on track performance, they expect further teams to use the practice time available most likely in the final four rounds, to build and develop 2021-style parts to understand next year's effects. As one F1 designer described, it's a little bit like taking a hacksaw to the current cars, and the consequences of that hacksaw must not be underestimated. Ferrari wasn't the only team with enough foresight to look into 2021's mandatory developments. Mercedes also spent the entirety of Friday running in a partial 2021 spec to coincide with FP2's tyre test. Rather than focusing on the aerodynamic implications, Mercedes has its own battle to fight for next year, in the prescribed removal of its dual-axis steering system. DAS will be outlawed next year, meaning that Mercedes loses one of its tools to bring its front tyres up to temperature by changing the toe angle a couple of degrees for a more complete warm-up. The W11 was conceived to host both DAS and a conventional steering setup, and although it meant that Mercedes mechanics had to spend time building up and dismantling one system for the other, it meant that Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas could reacquaint themselves with a dasless existence in time for next year. Losing the system won't be the end of the world for Mercedes, but it does mean that the vehicle dynamicists and suspension designers based in Brackley will have to spend time finding a way to replace that passively with the low pass that they put through the tyres. Mercedes cantered to victory in Portugal, Hamilton beating Bottas by over 25 seconds, but there have been momentary periods over the last few races where it appears that Red Bull has lost a small portion of its deficit. 
Maintaining a high rate of development, Red Bull has continued to explore the limits of his RB16 and introduce some interesting innovations. Firstly, the team has opted for the small split channel in the rear suspension upper mounting, where the top wishbone connects to the upright. Now, This is a design that Mercedes explored last year and seems to be a way of breaking up the mounting points to channel airflow into an area that usually sustains some kind of blockage from the suspension components. When Mercedes introduced a similar design last year, it did so to a backdrop of queries to the FIA from the other teams over its legality. Now, Usually that's a precursor to getting a designed outlawed or, in this case, having the confirmation from the FIA to develop their own solutions. But Red Bull has also developed a new front wing too, featuring a rather novel innovation. Underneath the wing features a slot on the underside of the end plate, while two small holes appear on the trailing edge of each front wing end plate. This draws the air through the construction of the wing and releases it at a point where the air is being turned around the front of the wheel. By transferring the airflow from a larger inlet underneath to a smaller outlet, this will accelerate the airflow coming out, as per Bernoulli's principle. Hooray! It's time for some science! So in response to that, the fluid pressure within will drop. This seems to be a way of strengthening the airflow released off the top corner of the end plate, which will further assist the outwashing characteristic that the curvature of the end plates provides. Think of it like a super soaker. The container that the water is in has a larger diameter, and therefore a larger pressure compared to the nozzle. To balance that out, the jet of water passing through the nozzle moves at a much faster speed, as per Bernoulli's continuity equation. So in the case of Red Bull's front wing, airflow is then drawn to that jet of fluid, owing to its lower pressure, and then can be manoeuvred around the front tyre. Ultimately, the holes are very tiny in size, but this is a novel approach to Red Bull's aerodynamic development, and sidesteps many of the restrictive regulations governing the front wing's shape and size by using the internal construction. Although 2020 is now drawing to a close, the unique situation of being obliged to carry over cars into next year will mean that every avenue of development is being explored. A lot of the development work will, as Ferrari and Mercedes have proved, go into nullifying the effects of 2021's hacks or aero regulations. But as Red Bull is proving, there should be plenty of life in these old dogs yet.